What we can achieve imperfectly together is better than getting nothing done yet being completely right about how good my part of that energy ecosystem is. Hi, you're watching Global Energy Show's 5 by 5 series. I'm Rachel Gregory, and joining me today is CEO of the Canadian Energy and Climate Nexus, David Milia. The Canadian Energy and Climate Nexus is a nonprofit organization. Can you tell us a bit about what you do and the projects that you work on? You know, at CCN, we live by thinking that an energy and climate friendly future is not only possible, but achievable. It's just that there's complexities around it. So we kind of created this NGO to say, you know, what kind of projects could we do under the values of all inclusivity? That is as many stakeholders that have a, a position or are impacted by something uh, that uses knowledge. So it is effective and efficient in the way that we execute it. And that promotes action, like actually doing it. As Canada remains to be a global leader in resource development, in your opinion, David, how does the industry need to change to be more inclusive to all energy sources in order to reach global climate targets? Canada provides about 4% of the world's energy, making us sixth just behind India, who's four and change. And we are in the top 10 around crude oil, around natural gas, around hydro, uranium production. It's not that we don't have the tools necessary to do it. The issues that Canada has is that it's a vast country and that we have polarization with regards to what type of energy uh, should be the correct one. How much do we tend to put an emphasis on trying to understand other Canadians? Imagine if we could work together. So the challenge, in my opinion, is our culture of wanting to collaborate on things when it's not our thing. And we're more focused on arguing. What we can achieve imperfectly together is better than getting nothing done yet being completely right about how good my part of that energy ecosystem is. So to me, it's a cultural challenge and an over-reliability on our neighbor to the South to decide things for us. How do we stop the polarization and actually look at the complexity to come together and be proud of all sectors of Canadian energy? The demand to decarbonize has been creating a lot of pressure for the Canadian hydrocarbon market. In your opinion, what can these companies do to relieve that pressure and help bring investment and trust back into the product? I think the culture has changed publicly. So when we're looking at hydrocarbon companies, how do we move from doing these activities that just create a report or just a goodwill proposition to actually operationalizing them? because no company is better suited to have the infrastructure, right? To have the economy of scale to actually make a strong impact in the hydrocarbon industry of Canada. But they have to come to the realization that the structures that need to go in place need to be equative to those that they use in finance and potentially in engineering and construction of facilities. You look at the various metrics that are real in ESG and that apply to your company because each company is a little bit different. And then you take an audit of at least one year of operations trying to see where exactly are we on those metrics? Then you have to spend a little bit of time and I would say one year of cycle to know what those numbers are. And then you can make decisions for targets and you operationalize them just the same as you would economic ones right at the top. Where do you see the energy transition going and how feasible is net zero emissions by 2050? The public perception of transition is so high that that's going to put more influence on parties that want to govern to make sure that their policies and regulation promote transition. Whether industries are ready, whether the transition industries are ready is another question. So I think we're going to struggle in putting action into policy and regulation push. What would you want to say to Canadians who have doubts about Canada's energy sector? You have doubts. We are a strong energy power in the world. There's no denying that. But when you have doubts, uh, don't have doubts on uh, what we can do. Have doubts on whether we're going to be able to do it. 80% of the problems we face with emissions, with consumption, etc., are driven by that individual, not by the industry that provides the energy but rather by the consumer. So if you have doubts on what's happening with energy providers and energy industries, ask yourself, well, what are you willing to do? 
What are you willing to change for your consumption? Are you willing to go on an effective energy diet of sorts? I like turning that question and kind of having a call to arms to say, if you're wondering what can be done, instead of looking to maybe judge how that industry is pushing or doing, see what you can do actively. Thank you so much, David. It is very evident that you are passionate about energy and climate, and it was so great chatting with you today. Just getting going, but very thankful for the opportunity to speak a little bit about it, and you know, our doors are open. And thank you for watching another episode of Global Energy Show's 5x5 series. Make sure you like this video, share it to your networks, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next week.